Hello, Savan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, hi, Savan, and thanks for having me. I'm very excited to um, have this interview with you today. I think the work that you're doing with Ogunte is uh, very inspiring, first of all. Thank I've been you. following you uh, since, I think, two years or something like that, before even I started with Creators for Good. And yeah. also, I think it's very important, not just inspiring, but super important. Uh, for women empowerment, and so I'm, I'm excited uh, for you to share uh, the, um, of how Ogunte uh, is working and, and what's the impact that you are having. Okay. Voila, so that's uh, basically the topic of our interview today. Um, maybe before we start really talking about Ogunte and the work that we are doing, I just wanted you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit your background, what did you do before? Uh, and why did you uh, decided to start your own uh, social enterprise? Okay, um, so I'm Servan Moison and I'm French and I've been living in different countries. <laughs> I started Ogunte in 2001 and before that it was in the Netherlands and before that I had a, a go at different activities and community development activities in the Netherlands. Um, uh, closely connected to the art world and uh, Brazil uh, and also um, fair trade movement. It was a mishmash of loads of stuff. And in parallel to be able to eat, I was doing a lot of marketing uh, for international uh, corporates uh, who taught me uh, a lot of good things, operationally speaking. But when I uh, was uh, going into their premises and the first thing you'd seen, you know, in the morning at 8 a.m. was the, uh, the, their, their rates at the, the stock exchange, you know, the, their performance at the stock exchange. I said, that's not really my cup of tea. So I learned a lot. But I also understood that whatever I wanted to do, even to eat or to, to, you know, to fill my time <laughs> to be for my life and I, I needed to have some sort of purpose and and a sense of uh, of in you know impact creating an impact so i started by helping a lot of people to develop their community initiatives connect with each other and and you know launch ideas about what they could do to promote themselves and i didn't have much of a business background i didn't have any business background at all but i thought that i think that the entrepreneurial um, mindset was always there and uh, and it just fitted what I wanted to do. And then I started Ogunte. And there was no talk about social enterprise back in the days in the Netherlands. You just did what you had to do, what you wanted to do. As long as you compel, complied with the, uh, you know, the, the, the Dutch tax authorities <laughs> and, and the, their, their, you know, and then the tax offices, then you were uh, basically free to do whatever you want to do. And so I started that, that support service for these community initiatives. And later on, I realized that uh, there was a lot of women involved in this. Uh, they were co kept coming, kept staying. And these women were um, uh, gradually more and more and more involved in, in structures that uh, used uh, commercial means to create an impact. And that's what I discovered later was called social enterprise. Then I moved to the UK where that movement was flourishing. Uh, it was not new because it, been, it had existed for a long time, you know, almost 200 years. Uh, but then, you know, they had uh, that kind of second life uh, injected in it and it was uh, gaining ground. But we realized that there was no space created really for women in that space, in that field. They couldn't go to uh, business networks, women business networks, because maybe, you know, the shoulder pads didn't fit, I don't know, didn't match. Uh, <laughs> they couldn't go to these, they're, they're not really at, you know, a comfortable with these, these um, community uh, group networks because they have that entrepreneurial mindset attached to them and the, the talks were different. So naturally the space that I had created and I started created as well in the UK uh, became a natural fit. It was okay to talk about money and entrepreneurial uh, ways to be and it was uh, important to leave a space to that environment and social impact and that's how it started to grow basically and become the the, the structure that it is today 
And then can you please tell us what is Ogunte's mission today and uh, what has been the impact so far? So Ogunte is really there to support uh, women social entrepreneurs and uh, we want to create a world where women are able to learn, lead and connect in order to bring their voice about, uh, achieve the impact that they uh, want to achieve uh, and uh, really change the face of the world. Change the world is one thing, changing the face of the world and changing people's worlds is another thing and we are there to support them in doing so. They can't do this in isolation, we connect them. They sometimes uh, need to have a different perspective on the work they do and the system they're evolving in, that's why we coach them. And sometimes they need brokerage and resources, so we pass this resource on. And you mentioned that now you are based in the UK. Is Ogunte's work mostly focused on the UK only or do you also have a more global um, audience or impact? It's global. We always test our program here, um, uh, you know, on off, off, on site <laughs> and online on site. And then we uh, try to replicate them and to adapt them de depending on different um, uh, users or, or um, audiences. So, for instance, one of our flagship products was uh, the, the uh, incubator for women social entrepreneurs. We call the incubator because people were reacting positively to that. The thing is, we had a different way to do uh, things, of course. <laughs> uh, we uh, we tested that in the UK and then we developed uh, an online version and we had uh, uh, almost 250 women logged onto the online courses uh, and the last um, the last private group, the last uh, private make-a-wave incubator was uh, done in collaboration with Match International in Canada and 12 of their grantees who are women's organizations led by women uh, received uh, the the make wave uh, curriculum and it was very exciting because there were women from jamaica up to um, south africa uh, somalia egypt it was it was nuts because they had a different context different red tapes different political issues um, but at large they they had a common language which was to really make an impact on women and girls. Discovering social enterprise as a way to deliver their services, which was hard because some of them um, were providing, for instance, uh, uh, support to uh, violent survivors um, and, and you, know, you name it. So the different topic, difficult topics and you can't just sell anything and selling postcards is just not. Uh, relevant in this context you know they they, they needed to think big and uh, and differently so it, well, we took the challenge and it was great okay great um and maybe now i want to dig a bit into the behind the scenes of uh ogunte now that we know what's the mission and the impact uh the first thing i i wanted you to share is uh whether uh, ogunte is financially sustainable and what's your business model i'm asking because i know that many uh, of our viewers are either aspiring social entrepreneurs or are already in the process of creating their own uh, impactful business mm -hmm. and so i wanted to know which is the model that you chose for ogunte and how does it work exactly so the model, we have a, a legal structure that's called a, com a community interest company, uh, limited by shares. Uh, the model is a basic consultancy model where we provide services or contracts to mainly private, uh, this year is only private uh, foundation or private uh, clients, organizations, social enterprise themselves, so, uh, but no public contracts. Previous years, in the previous years, we had public contracts with uh, local authorities, for instance, to commission the incubators for, uh, to be deployed in your city. Uh, so it's a mix, it's a hybrid mix of uh, clients, uh, different types of clients, uh, program based. So that means we provide an incubator for a certain amount of time. And then we have also coaching sessions for individuals uh, uh, or a whole, support, uh, a whole set of support services for uh, 
peers or all the all other supporters in the sector. So we support not just the end user, but also the uh, ecosystem. All right, great to know. And uh, there is something else that I guess people are wondering, um, again, because they are themselves creating their own uh, impact-driven uh, businesses, is uh, how much did you need to invest, uh, more or less, uh, to create Ogunte, and how long did it take to become uh, financially sustainable? now that it's a global network I've, I've always invested my own money uh, and and if, if I remember uh, what was that 16 years ago with the first gig I organized it was literally a gig to promote some uh, some it was yeah it's a Brazilian community group I lost money because I didn't have the good math it was terrible so um, yeah I invested the money I didn't have <laughs> mistake uh, but that was a long time ago uh, I always uh, I always operated on a trading basis so I am I sold products and then with a profit I invested in all sorts of uh, other services or people to be able to deliver more services so it's a trading things uh, because you, it's a business support uh, venture uh, the investment need is not the same, and maybe I'm, I'm uh, I don't know, it's not the same as you're know, investing for products, uh, you know, manufacturing and things like that. It's a different style of things, but uh, it's sustainable. But it implies that you also, uh, the way you invest in people as well to work with you or professional services uh, to develop your your platforms your social media you name it or, or even your, the training of you and your associates you need to invest some some money so you need to be able to sell quite enough to be able to 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 have the money to do so so at some point a loan might be interesting as long as you repay it you know it, it's you can't be afraid of that we operated with uh, crowdfunding we, we tested all the products that we've been presenting to our uh, audience especially the uh, the people in our uh, make a wave incubator so we worked with angels uh, that kind of thing so we brokered the funds <laughs> it was scary at the beginning but then it's you know it's easier now for people who start, it's important to uh, physically detach yourself from the fear of paying someone else. Okay, that's very important. And you you feel you need to go over the physical fear. On paper, you know you need to do, and everybody talks about investment, but blah blah blah. You need to feel the physical. You need to feel this physically, and you'll see that once you've done it, you say. You know, I saved an enormous amount of time because I invested or I paid someone to deliver professional work. In the meantime, I was able to do the stuff I am best at instead of trying to build another website or things like that, which is nice, but it's just procrastination unless you're good at building websites. I totally agree with you and actually I really think that um, the world is getting toward a more linear model where instead of having like big corporations with tons of people operating under each other, we'll have more like entrepreneurs with, you know, who would hire um, different talents uh, to work on specific issues where you can concentrate on your, on your own work. So the, the danger, the, there, there is some sort of danger as well in, in, uh, uh, in buying little services and and or you know um, delegating but it's nice it's 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 good to do so there's one thing though it needs to fit in a bigger strategy it needs to fit in a in a plan uh, and something concrete that you want to develop not just uh, buying someone else on an ad hoc basics just for the fun of it why because if you if everybody does that and work in that linear kind of little uh, little contract basis, we might create some more poverty. You know, the, the, there's a lot of people who have been made redundant and create their own little business and they uh, uh, provide services to others this way. The problem is their, um, their revenue have been decreasing, 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 decreasing. And I fear that's because there's not a real, uh, a, a real strategic approach to the work they do or even so, um, People need to actually, when they say they collaborate, they need to collaborate more in a, maybe in a sort of cooperative sense of the terms and really have a, a, a plan 
because otherwise they're going to have little contract here, the contracts there, even for small social businesses, it's not going to go anywhere. So collaboration is nice if it, it's nice if it fits into a bigger plan. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> and talking about team or, or collaboration with um, you know people you have outsourced things to, uh, can you uh, give us a bit of um, yeah uh, an overview of who you work with to make Ogunte's impact happen? So I work with uh, associates and ambassadors. And they all have they all have a technical expertise in social entrepreneurship or social innovation in a wider sense. Uh, they also have expertise in either coaching or finance or business development. And they're very good communicators, and they have their own ventures, one or more sometimes. <laughs> so we are the the structure is a very fluid and linear and, and flat structure as you mentioned. We make decisions together. We consult each other, and they work on a program basis, and they're very loyal. So that's fabulous, and they're based all over the world. Just as a transition, um, I wanted to ask you, what do you enjoy the most in your uh, entrepreneurial journey today? Um, I, at the moment, we have different types of, of contracts. We've got um, a, a big plan to create that map called map.ogunte.com to uh, pin as many women-led social enterprises as possible. Uh, and, and to see uh, how they can communicate with each other. That's exciting because it's like a sort of a big treasure hunt. So when people go on the map.ogunte.com, they pin the venture, they connect with other social entrepreneurs, women social entrepreneurs, they learn from each other, they start conversation and they challenge each other. They're very fiery. It's lovely. It's great. So that's something that is a very enjoyable. It takes a lot of time, but it's great. It's great to be able to participate in that and to to make this happen, contribute to make this happen. The other thing is I collaborate with a, um, a foundation called the World Humanity Foundation and lead, leading their awards program. It's an investment in uh, uh, ventures that prevent violence against women. And this year, the award will uh, invest in ICT organization, an uh, organization that have a tech product or, or service that prevents violence against women. And that's great because I'm working on the fringes of the usual social entrepreneurship network, but with women who have these incredible organizations tackling issues that are hard to tackle, that are very political, that are... Uh, that are never going away, and that is really scary. But we're trying different approach to, to tackle this. So it's it, what is um, fabulous in the job I do uh, with the associates, with the collaboration, with the other organization is to uh, make the world a better place for women and girls using social enterprise, using technology, using social innovation, and um, having these women participating at the decision making table, uh, helping them having a voice. Um, uh, try to support them in changing their perspective on things so that they're getting more efficient and and that's and that's my day job <laughs> but it's not just my day job it's it's a lifestyle it's a mindset great <laughs> and maybe a final uh, question then if you had one and advice and one only to give to people who are uh, a woman who are watching this video and who are very inspired and uh, looking forward to create their own um, impact driven venture, what would it be? Uh, drop the fears in you and leave space for more love. When you're going to test your venture, test it with your neighbors, the people who we cross every day, but we never look in the eyes. Uh, try to solve their issues first, if they're okay with it. Because building relationships, building conversation with people who live next to you, it's the most valuable thing you can experience. And they'll teach you a thing or two. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Seven, for all the, the great insight that you shared with and um, I will put the link of the map that you mentioned just under the video so that people who are uh, watching and have um, not yet registered or pinned themselves on the map can, can do so. Thank you very much. <laughs>